Foraging for purple dead nettle. Purple dead nettle is an easy forage edible and a medical plant that is most likely growing in your backyard or somewhere nearby. You've probably seen this weed and didn't even know it had edible and medical uses. Because of its widespread nature, foraging for purple dead nettle is very easy. It is native to Europe and Asia but has become a common place in North America gardens and distributed areas. Purple dead nettle is one of those plants that when you see a picture of it you immediately recognize it but never knew what it was called. I have a good bit of it growing in my backyard and I see it everywhere when I'm out walking the garden. I finally decided that I was going to forage some of it. Purple dead nettle is in the mint family. And because of its apparent resemblance to stinging nettle, minus the sting, you need to make sure that you pay close attention to which one you have. Both can be used for the same stuff, but one needs a little bit more care. Purple dead nettle is easy to identify with its square stems like all mint family plants, fuzzy leaves, and purple tops with little pink flowers. They are usually fairly low growing, but can sometimes reach up to 8 to 10 inches tall. Purple dead nettle does not have any toxic lookalikes. It's sometimes confused with a flower that is uh, closely related and another tasty edible weed. The main difference between purple dead nettle and henbit is that the arrangement of the leaves are a little bit different. Henbit has leaves that surround the stem while purple dead nettle has a triangle shaped leaf. Uh, you can see the difference between purple dead nettle and henbit. Uh, if you look at henbit, it has almost kind of a spacing. So you'll have your flower and then the stem and then a flower piece where the leaf are, a stem, another flower, and then little blooms, and then almost a cone shape, and then the purple flower will stand straight up uh, from the... I'm also going to show you guys how I am going about drying my uh, dead nettle. Um, I could not get to my dehydrator because I have my entire kitchen filled with plants right now that I am growing for my garden and I cannot get to my closet in the kitchen that has my dehydrator in it. So I used my confection oven and it actually done really well and then I pulled it out of there and I've let it set for uh, about a week now so it's probably about ready to be used. Um, it is best to gather these plants when it is dry, when there's no rain or dew on them. Uh, and you need to make sure that once you get them that you do uh, check for ants, make sure there's no ants in it because they're often found inside of it or make sure that you soak them in water like I am going to do. So let me go back over some of the things that you can do. You can have edible spring food. You can make tinctures, which I'm going to make. Watch for that video. You can make poultice for small wounds and insect bites. I'm going to make that as well. Um, I'm not going to do a spit poultice, but I'm going to just do a normal poultice. Um, that is something for you to look forward to. Make sure uh, that you keep an eye out for videos on this stuff. Um, if you're going, if you need a quick fix in the woods, 
you need something to cover an insect bite, make sure you just get it, chew it up into a pulp, and then put it back on top. It does the same thing as yarrow does, uh, plantains, and um, it's a great uh, way to cover any wounds or first aids, and a great skill to know in the wild. Uh, infused oils. So I'm going to make some infused oils, and we're going to uh, probably maybe make a salve. I'm not completely sure which ones I want to do. So if there's anything that you would like to see, uh, make sure that you comment in the video so that I know. Um, I have a lot of different recipes and things like that that I can do. I can even show you how to use it in a lotion. I have a lotion recipe that I use for um, my work, actually. I own a business, Sweet Haven Workshop. And if you guys would like to see that, I can show you that. If you would like to purchase anything, let me know and I can add it in on my workshop if it's something that you would love to try out. Um, the lotions are really good. Uh, you're getting all the benefits from the dead nettle. And you can add it to sunflower oil or hemp seed oil or vegetable wax and have a really nice lotion um, colorants for mountain pour soaps so if you'd like to see a, a certain thing made let me know but keep your eye out we'll make some salves we'll make some tinctures i'll show you how to uh, go about drying your nettle and what that looks like plant I absolutely love that it has so many purposes and points and I'm always constantly looking for new things for Sweet Haven Workshop because I like using uh, plant-based products I I don't want to be a person that is constantly getting chemicals and chemicals and chemicals and putting them into my uh, shop I want chemical free things and a lot of stuff can be made uh, with plant-based products and not and there's also the fact that if you ever see a product out in stores and it says this is plant-based products a lot of times if you go to look you cannot even read the words on the label because they technically are not uh, a chemical free product they are labeling it as a plant-based product but they still end up using chemicals or something of the sort in order to acquire the product that's in front of you so then it takes away and i like being able to have plant-based products plant-based soaps and shampoos and lotions and salves and things like that that yes you'll need to care for more and yes, you'll be able to see that, you know, their lifespan doesn't last a long time. That's because they're made uh, from plants. And there's actually a lot of plants that you can use and plant-based stuff that actually comes from a plant itself. You can put in there and it causes a shelf life. While it's a shorter shelf life, it's actually better for you better for your body you don't have to worry about the chemicals so everything that I make is basically on a buying uh, purpose so when it's purchased from me I am making that product we are fixing those products we are growing our products and we are making those things and um, I just I think it's awesome that I have so much stuff around me that's the great thing about living in the country you have fields you have uh, gardens you have ways to grow things and make stuff and there's even plants that make their own shampoo and soap I bet you guys didn't know that um, so if you want more videos that are more informative on uh, plant-based products and plants that you can use to replace your everyday items let me know I would absolutely love to burn your ears off and give you guys an insight to 
what all you're missing on plants and how much you really don't need the chemicals that are in your life um, as much as you think that you do you really don't I hope that you guys have enjoyed this I hope that you keep an eye out if you're not subscribed subscribe so that you can keep up and um, keep an eye out I've got lots of videos coming and um, we'll do a tincture next <laughs>